Lady of Now, and I'm invited to talk about my work. Um, here you see some of my projects I did, and um, thank you first for, for the invitation to talk over here. Um, uh, actually, I did two, I had two allegations, both in industrial design. And um, my bachelor degree was on the uh, technical university in the Netherlands. And uh, here on this study, I have, I've gained a lot of um, knowledge about uh, materials, physics, mathematics, uh, 3D software, and everything like that. But when I finished this study, I didn't feel that I was a designer, you know. Uh, I had a lot of knowledge, but I didn't have an own vision or something. So after that, I decided to do a master's degree on um, the Royal Academy of Arts and the Hague, also in the Netherlands. And at this study, uh, it, was, it was meant to create a, a vision as a designer. And as a designer, I am convinced by the fact that we should use solutions out of nature to improve our products and our processes and to, to make them more efficient. And sometimes uh, a project starts from a frustrate, frustration, like a product a production process where I think about a lot that's so uh, it creates a lot of waste or it's polluted or it's totally inefficient, and sometimes it starts out of uh, a fascination out of nature, what I see. So, in the past, um, products were designed to last as long as possible, and I think that's kind of normal, but unfortunately nowadays it's totally different, and we all know that uh, companies decide the how long products can last, and that's also called plant obsolescence. Um, I think it's ridiculous, and I think, um, and this is all, we all do this to keep selling products and to keep the you know, economy flowing. But, and as a designer, we are creating constantly new products. And I think this brings a very huge responsibility regarding sustainability and pollution, pollution from our, our own planet. And I think it's very important to, to look at the whole production, uh, product life cycle from the beginning, like from the raw materials we use towards the uh, recyclability of the product. And, um, with my graduation project from the, at the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague, I really wanted to create awareness for this problem. Um, and uh, that, at that time, I, because I think we all can make a small difference. You know? Even if it's small, we all can, can do. And at that time, I started to learn about biomimicry. And biomimicry is about learning from nature, so using solutions out of nature to improve our products and uh, to make this a little bit more clear it's not a very beautiful picture but it makes it clear that um, life on earth exists now for more than four billion years and um, uh, if you put these 4.5 billion years in one year, then we as human beings, as the modern human beings, we don't even exist for the last second of that whole year. So you can imagine that the uh, industrial revolution, where we, all the products we make are, we, and all the uh, solutions are, uh, the product we use, we use from the, we had that from the uh, industrial revolution and I think it's ridiculous that we, why shouldn't we use all the knowledge out there of biological trial and error from
from that whole year instead of not even the last second. You know, it's I don't know. I think it's because nature has a lot of brilliant ideas and and it's it's an unlimited library of solution. I think so. And because of all the new technologies nowadays, uh, like 3D printing, we are creating more distance from nature. And um, but I think we use, we have we need to use nature. We we yeah, we need it. And actually, by um, because of these new technologies, we are able to. Uh, to imitate and recreate these very complex structures and processes out of nature way more precisely. So why not combining nature and technology for improving our processes? Uh, and 3D printing is one example of such a new technology we, which we what, what we can use to, to uh, recreate, for example, structures from nature. So now I'm going to explain a little bit about my uh, project I did. And um, here you see my graduation project from my bachelor's studies. That I had to do that. Um, I did a soft seating uh, uh, project, so design a soft seating system. Is, this, is, this is the design I did for open space offices. And actually, it's the same as all the sofas we have at home. Everybody has a sofa at home, I assume. Uh, and during this project, I've gained a lot of insight in the whole production process of this product we all have. And I thought it was, we are living in the 21st century, but it's kind of old fashioned how we do, how, how we still do this. Because I've gained a lot of insight in the whole production process at that moment. And for example, for the construction of the, these sofas, we use metal, we use boots, we use uh, a different types of foam for the comfort we want to have for flexibility. Uh, we use fabrics and ladders for the top of the product, and all these uh, different parts of this product are prepared in one single factory, they all have their own factory, and they all produce a lot of waste. And then they are transported to the assembling factory, and then they get assembled with a lot of glue. And of course this brings a big problem, because these products, they end up like this. But at least in the Netherlands, but I assume here it will be exactly the same. And um, we we are not reusing any parts of this product. We we are not re reusing any material because everything is glued together. So we are burning them and it's gone. We think, but it's it's yeah. So at my graduation project at the art academy, I wanted to change this. I wanted to change this this whole process. So the question I asked myself was, how would nature solve this problem? And of course, in nature, we don't use, uh, nature doesn't use too many materials, or there is not even material waste in nature. So how does nature create different properties? And um, in nature, one single material grows in different kinds of structures, and that's also how functionalities are created. So, for this project, I did a lot of research on structures from nature and their functionality. Here you see some microscopic pictures of plant cells. And for example, a tree is built up out of one single material, but with a lot of different functionalities like stiffness and flexibility. And you see some spiralized structures, of course they create flexibility and differences in densities where you can create more stiff, stiffness in different parts. So I started to do some remodeling of these structures in, uh, in 3D software. 
and on a very basic, simple level, but it was so, and, and I printed them, small pieces of them, in one single material, just a simple nine printing material, be able, so it's a part of wood as an S printing. And um, it was so nice to see that by adjusting a structure that you can change the whole uh, functionality of one single material. It's like some were very stiff, some were very flexible, and it was, yeah, it was a very nice experiment. So the end uh, product of my graduation project was this soft seat. It was a scale model because of the limitations of the tree, in the building blocks of the tree printer. But it has all the functionalities it needed, and it was one single material. So actually there are a lot of advantages to produce like this. Because we can produce way more local, we, we can produce in one single factory instead of five or six different ones. We don't have material waste. Um, we have one material so we can recycle the product way more easy. And what's also interesting is, is that you can localize the functionality more precisely, so you can create even a more ergonomic product. So, after that, I, uh, in 2015, Volvo came to me and they asked me to think about the car of the future and do and show them something out from my vision. And we all know that cars are built up out of a lot of different materials and parts. So I think this same vision I had on soft seating, you can put that also on different parts of a car, for example, the bumper, the dashboard, the roof, the wheels, whatever. But what I did, I because the time was very limited, so I did exactly the same for the car seats because there we have the same problem, of course. But then I dig into different structures again, and more Swedish structures, because Sweden, well, the, the heritage of Volvo is very important for the brand. So I want to get this Swedish feeling, and here you see some inspiration, and uh, what I used, and this is the end product in the end. But what I wanted to add in this project was the use of uh, biological and local uh, materials to print with, because that's still a problem in the 3D printing world, I think. We are lacking biological materials. So, I, together with a scientist, I did a big, huge research on how to create a printable bioplastic from pine resin. It's a, it's a common material in, in, in Sweden, of course. So we did a lot of tests with wood printing and pine resin, and, and, but it's such a big research next to the thing I did already, so there are still not a very printable result yet, but the, the, the research is still going on on the side. Um, and then in 2016, I Together with Rose Meerman, it's also a Dutch designer. We won the Bio Art and Design Award. It's an award in the Netherlands for uh, designers or artists who are collaborating with scientists. And we did a collaboration with um, Swammerdam Institute. It's an institute that do, they are doing research on the growth and transformation from tissues and organs in the human body. So, um, we uh, explored actually in this project the boundaries of 3D printing again on a totally new and different, out of the box way. And um, we did it in we, we, we did it in three totally different ways, and we created three movable objects inspired by three uh, organs and movements in the human body. The first one was uh, the lactation of the breast tissue, and um, we created a very complex 
a hallway system where uh, we put, we there was a liquid flowing through like how milk is uh, flowing through the breast tissue during the lactation period, and this was the end result um, of that breast tissue. And the second one was. Um, inspired by our breathing system so the long tissue lungs are very interesting they are built up as fractals i think we all know it's, it's, this is a um, yeah you, you can see how they are and um, actually i uh, did these were first tests we did by 3d printed objects heating them, them up and uh, putting air through it and then the, the, the shape change, changes. And the end product was actually a very complex balloon, a flexible balloon, and there was constantly air putting through and then the balloon was bleeding, uh, breathing in and out. And then the other um, object was inspired by the peristaltic movement of our intestines and um, by printing on textiles we, we recreated this fluid movement of uh, the peristaltic movement. So these were three objects inspired by three or uh, organs in the human body and in a totally different way and for us it was a very experimental and free research on how we can use 3D printing and materials in a totally new way. It was an art project, but for us it was also a, an, a project to explore how we can come up with new possibilities for 3D printing and materials and apply this maybe in new products or systems or processes. So this is some kind of a way of working where we can come up with new ideas in a totally different way. And um, yeah, here you see the end products. Mm -hmm. um, then last year I got from the Dutch government uh, the Talent Development Fund. They uh, give it to 23 uh, artists and designers in the Netherlands from totally different fields each year and then you can professionalize your own studio or do a new project so it's basically getting money from the government to do something new and actually in this project I, um, collaborate, I, I did a new project and I collaborated with a Dutch 3D printing company, Oceans 3D. And they asked me to use their recyclable, recycled and recyclable uh, material to do a new project with. So basically I continued my research on the uh, improvement of soft feeding again. Um, but now I really wanted to create this real size model because all the models before were uh, scale models and that was all because of the limitations of 3D printing because the building box is not that big to produce this whole piece in once and the printing time and the printing costs and everything. But now with this project I, um, I realized a real size model and I reduced the printing time and printing costs with more than 50%. And that's only by building up a piece out of different parts instead of one big piece, like a puzzle. But for this, I of course had to dig into nature again to see what kind of joints and connections I could find over there um, to use in this product and without using Blue by assembling the piece. So basically, it was a, it's a product built up out of several uh, parts, and you can as assemble them without using blue. And um, I also built the 
parts in such a way that I could fit them on the most efficient way in the building book from the 3D printer to avoid useless printing time and space, of course. So it was built up as a puzzle in a, a, in a building box. And here you see the small movie of what? Robert. Can nature and its smallest life forms teach us? Radiolaria is a continuation of the quest to improve and innovate the production of soft seating through implementing nature's laws. The leading principle is the microscopic cell structure of the unicellular organisms, Radiolaria. This structure enables to capture several functionalities like durability, flexibility, and connectivity in one material. Implementing these unique properties in production processes has been difficult, but recent technology creating new options for product development. Using refined, recyclable materials and cutting-edge machines, Ocean's 3D printing produced radial area. It's designed in such a way that the most efficient production could take place in terms of time, energy, and material usage which allows for local production and diminishes transportation costs and energy emission. The result is a blend of technology and nature that celebrates the best of both. And um, as I said before, 
And, and after that, we really want to, we want to collaborate with a software engineer or whatever to build a software for this whole library. But that's a long uh, project, I think. It will last some years when this, when this library is built. But as I said before, I think we all can make a difference, even when it's small. Uh, but when we are collaborating and work together, with different professionals and profession, professionalities, then I think we can even make a bigger change. So I'm always open for nice collaborations. And um, yeah, this is also what I want to say. Projects. Thank you.